So this is EE six nine eight G lecture ten. So uh, one announcement before we start: we will have another mini quiz next week on Wednesday, and I think after that it is straight to the mid sem exams, right? So before the mid sem exams, we'll have one more quiz so that you have some more practice. Okay. So I got a very interesting question on charge pump after the uh, last class. So let me quickly sketch the charge pump circuit. Let's say VBN is set correctly. So this was up bar. This is connected to ground so that it is always on. This is connected to VDD. And VBN, let's assume that it is generated correctly. And then we had the op-amp generating VBP for us. And we found out from our uh, thought process that the signs are to be plus and minus, right? Uh, did you have any confusions on this? Okay, so then the question I received was this, Gen this there are now two loops here, right? Generally, if you have an op-amp and associated two loops, we will have to make sure that the DC negative feedback exists overall. So what we would do is we would check which of the paths has a larger loop gate and make sure there is a negative sign in that path, right? So this is the common algorithm that we have been following whenever we see an op-amp embedded within two loops. So this is a similar problem, right? So if we think along that process, along that thought process, is it still in DC negative feedback? Is that question clear? But a very interesting question to ask, yeah. Sorry. Uh, huh. So the feedback will now depend upon whether this switch is on or off, right? So if you consider a typical period under steady state conditions, this up bar, this particular PMOS is on only for a small duration, right? Whereas this loop is the loop one is on all the time. So this is the feedback in the second loop is on only for a very short duration of the time. The feedback factor is on only for very short duration of the time. For the rest of the period, feedback factor is zero. So if you look at the average feedback present, the feedback in the first loop will be much larger than the average feedback present in the second loop. In fact, uh, if the uh, down switch is turning on and up is turning on for much smaller fraction, the feedback, average feedback in the second loop will be very, very small number. Okay. So that way, whichever thought process you follow, you would still end up with the same signs for the other. Is it clear? So, uh, by positive feedback, do you mean loop one? Huh. So let's check if that is positive or negative. So let's say I break here. Oh, sorry. Okay. That, is negative. that is negative feedback because it's connected to the gate of the PMOS. Right? So this was the loop that could have potentially gone into positive feedback, but it is on only for a short duration. So overall, the feedback is still negative. Yeah. Okay. So then we are now going to look at the small signal model for a delay lock loop. Okay, so let me quickly revisit what is meant by small signal model. So if I had a common source amplifier like this, I would give a bias voltage given by VGS. And on top of this, I will have a small signal riding, right? Then I take the output here. There is some bias voltage plus a small signal V0, right? And then I can sketch a small signal circuit or a linear circuit, which would be of this form, 
So if I have a small signal VGS here, I will have a current given by GM into VGS. Now let me assume that channel length modulation is zero. So then this current is flowing through the resistor R. Okay, and the small signal model is now linear. So that makes all our calculations easier. So similarly, our aim is to develop a small signal model, which is linear for the delay lock though. So we will first have to identify what are the large signal parameters or the operating point parameters in a delay lock loop. And then we have to identify what are the small signal parameters. So this would be the small signal V0. And then have to figure out the linear model for the same. So this is a huge task in front of us. So let me quickly sketch out the DLL. So this is PFD, charge pump, and capacitor. Now on this capacitor, it's actually quite easy to identify the small signal and large signal parameters. So there will be some magic voltage, which will ensure that this delay is TRF. So let me call that magic voltage as VC0. Now on top of this, I could have a small signal VC of T. Right? What comments can you make about these two points? What signal should I be looking at there? Some voltage. So reference of P is now a square wave. So am I looking at some voltage waveform here? If I were to develop a small signal model? What should be the, uh, at least can you tell me the dimensions of the quantity? Is it voltage, current, or something else? Understood the question, right? So average voltage, uh, why, why do you say average voltage? Okay, so let me give you a counter argument for this. So you're saying that it should be some VRF of T. So uh, this is some VRF of T plus some small signal VRF of T. Right now, let's say I had a this is my large signal and I had a small signal like this. Does that affect my DLL circuit in any way? So, on this large signal, which is sketched in the white waveform, let's say I have a red waveform which is like this present only during the stable highs and stable lows. Does it, does it really count as a small signal in my circuit? Does the loop change anything? Detecting for the Correct. So there is a clue. Feedback is detecting for the edges. So the information that we are trying to control using this loop is in the edges. So what parameter should it be? Rise time, fall time is basically uh, you're talking about this rise and fall time. Could you give a more generalized uh, parameter than just rise and fall time? What other parameter have we learned in detail? It's something related with time, I agree. Phase, we could be looking at the phase of the signal, right? So we will be looking at, we'll be developing the model by looking at some large signal phase plus a small signal phase at this point, right? So now rise time, fall time will also eventually be related to it. But if we particularly deal with the uh, edges only, then modeling will get a little tricky. So once we start the modeling, you'll understand why we have chosen the phase. So now our small signal model is therefore a small signal phase domain model. Okay. So now we are going to be modeling this in continuous time first. So there is an implicit assumption that happens when we do this. 
So let's say my loop has settled such that the voltage Vc of t is some Vc O1, Vc, okay, Vc0. So this is with respect to time. Now let's say I changed my reference period. So from T ref, I made a small change and made this to T ref plus delta. Okay, now if this happens, the loop will adjust the control node voltage such that this locks to T ref plus delta, correct? So let's say the new control voltage is some VC1, okay? So we have to start from here and we have to eventually end up at this point. Now you know that the loop is going to do this in steps. So every period it is going to inject a small current into the capacitor and slowly in this fashion, we will eventually converge to that point. Okay, where this period is now T ref. So in every T ref is where you have a small change. Now in doing a continuous time model for this, we are assuming an average behavior as shown here. Okay, instead of capturing this complete behavior of the VC voltage changing in every period by small amounts, we'll assume that on an average, it's a smooth curve like this. Okay, so we are going to capture the average behavior of the circuit. Now for this sort of analysis, this sort of model to be reasonably accurate, the reference period or the rate at which the circuit is sampling the uh, phase error and adjusting the capacitor voltage has to be much, much smaller than the settling time of the delay lock. Okay. So the TRF is much, much smaller than the settling time of DLL. So then the approximation that we make here is reasonably accurate. This is clear. Okay, so then we can now start with how to model the VCDL. Okay. So this is the VCDL. We have some reference of T out of T and there is a voltage signal given here, which is also a function of time. Uh, settling time should be larger than, so imagine, uh, let me draw an alternate scenario, okay? If, if the curve was changing much faster, Let's say the settling time was something like this. And if our reference period was much larger, this assumption will not be correct, right? Settling time of DLN. So this was the initial state of the capacitor voltage, right? This is the final state at which the capacitor voltage has to reach. Okay. Now it takes Huh. When I made a small change uh, from TRF to TRF plus delta, the circuit uh, steady state has to change slightly, right? Now that can happen. So we can count the number of reference life cycles it takes for this change to happen. Now, if it is going to happen in one cycle, let's say within one uh, TRF, so you now have to think of a very large TRF, it just went like this. Then if I approximate as an average waveform like this, that approximation is not very correct, right? But if that change is happening over multiple reference cycles, then this approximation is very reasonable. So uh, the point of linearization doesn't come here yet. It is just that a discrete time behavior has been approximated to be a continuous time behavior. So like I said, delay lock loop has both discrete time elements and continuous time elements. So ideally we should be using a hybrid model to capture the full model, right? But that gets quite complicated for quick hand calculations. So we can either deal with it as a completely discrete time model or as a completely continuous time model. 
So we will start with a completely continuous time model because that is what you are familiar with in general. You are familiar with S domain models for circuits, right? So we are doing a completely continuous time model. So in doing this, we have made the assumption that the reference period is much, much smaller than the settling time of the DLL. So later on, we will see that this is actually a condition for stability also, right? So if the reference time was much, much smaller than the settling time of the DLL, our continuous time model is uh, very much valid. Okay. Okay, so now we are going to model the VCDL. Now there are two paths here. There is a path from reference to output. Let me call this as path one. There is another path from VC to the output. So this is path two. Okay, now to analyze this, let us first focus only on path one. Okay, so I'm going to assume that this VC of T is a constant and this is that magic value of voltage, which is giving us T ref across. Okay, so now we are going to look at the phase of the reference and phase of out. So if I say, uh, before I start with the phase, can you quickly tell me the equation for out of T in terms of ref of T? What should I write in the bracket? T minus T ref. Okay, so now let's say I model my ref of t as some function gamma into the total phase of the signal. Okay, where this can take two values, it could be one or it could be zero. So this is one if sine of this total phase is a positive value. And this is zero if sine of this phase is a negative value. Okay, this is straightforward. So anytime you have a confusion, please stop me. Yeah. Is this okay? Uh, sinusoid. Huh. I'm just making a definition. So ref of t is a square wave. Right. So I just needed to represent this as a function of total phase. So I'm giving you a definition up front so that there is no confusion later on. So I'm saying that if this, if I uh, put this total phase inside a sine function, I will get something like this. That's all. Okay. Now I can write this. Now I'm going to substitute a value for total phase. What is the general form of total phase that you have seen? So some omega ref into T plus an initial offset. Let's keep things simple. Let's say there is no phase offset. This is okay. So now I can write my out of T will be equal to gamma into phi of out of T. Again, just to set things straight up front. Okay. So now let me consider a very simple example. Let's say this is my ref of t. Okay. If I were to look at Phi ref of t, how would it look like with respect to time? You can sit in groups, discuss, and then tell me an answer. Today is a very important class, so take it. Constant like this. Okay. So phi ref of t ref of t is omega ref into t. So it's a linear curve. So this is going to be a curve like this where it will accumulate every t ref period, it is going to accumulate 2 pi. 
this is okay right so now let's say i plot out of t so if this is the point where i say t is equal to 0 then the signal first edge is going to come out after one period because our vcdl is offering an operating point delay of one reference period right so the first edge is going to come out So if I were to look at phi out of t, phi out of t will be a delayed version of phi ref of t, right? So phi out of t will be equal to phi ref of t minus t ref. Is this okay? So the signal is going to start at T ref. And it will go up like this. Okay, again, this is accumulating a two pi in the duration of one time period. So there is one more way in which you could have thought about this. We know phi ref of t is omega ref into t, but now that t is t minus t ref. So this is omega ref t minus, what is the other value simplify as? Minus two pi. Okay, so you could have thought about this as this curve getting shifted down by 2 pi, right? Either of them will give the same result after this point. Okay. This is clear. Now, can you plot phi out of t minus phi ref of t? So it makes sense to calculate the delay or look at the phase after the first edge has come out at the VCDL. So you can plot it from T ref onwards. How does that look like? So this is T ref. This is 2 T ref. It's a constant. And what is the value? 2 pi. So 2 pi delay in phase corresponds to T ref delay in time, right? So this whole thing makes sense to you now? So we have just seen how a phase information at the input of the VCDL is going to the output, right? This is okay. Sorry. Gamma of, huh? so uh, you're asking why I started with this, this notation. Uh, just to show you that I can write it as some function of the total phase, right? So I'm representing this rectangle as some function of this total phase. That's all. Uh, other than that, there isn't much significance to gamma. You didn't understand this minus two pi. This is minus two pi. Huh, okay, sorry. Uh, we should be looking at phi ref minus phi out. Yeah, thanks. So if I'm looking at phi ref of t minus phi out of t, this is equal to two pi. Right. Okay. So now I'm going to slightly complicate things. So let me copy these waveforms. Okay, so now to this 
phase, I'm going to add a small signal phase. So there is a small signal phase. So let's say this is a step function and this gets added after some delay after TRF. Like this. Okay. Now this is a small signal phase. Now I can calculate the total phase by ref of t. So if you notice, when we were doing this large signal, small signal business in terms of voltages, our notations used to be like this. We would have capital V, small n will be equal to capital V, capital N plus small v, small n. So this was our operating point or the quiescent point or what we call as a large signal. This was our small signal. And this was the total signal at a point. Right? So I'm following the same notation. Capital Phi, capital REF stands for the large signal or the operating point. Small phi, small ref is a small signal. Capital phi, small ref is the total phase, total signal at that point. Okay, so now let me plot this. So till T ref, no change. I'm simply summing up these two, right? Till T ref, there is no change. Then for this short duration after T ref is when I will have the step function. So it, will, it is going to step up here. And then again, there is no change. So this is the total phase. Now, if I have this as the total phase, how does my ref of t change? So till, till, the, till one clock period plus some time, there is no change because the phase waveform is the same. Okay, now every point beyond that have suddenly accumulated more space, which means it is going to advance, right? So, and this advancement, we will see only at the edges of a square wave. If it was a sine wave, you would have noticed that its frequency is increasing. Uh, frequency will not increase because the slope is same, but overall it would have shifted, right? So we will notice that all of these edges have shifted to this side. Okay, so the new waveform will look like this. So on the operating point phase, I have now added a small signal step phase. And because of this, from the point where the small signal has been added, all the edges have been advanced. Okay, so is this consistent? Is it fine for you? Okay, right. Then let me draw the corresponding uh, output phase. Now let us first plot how the output is going to look like. Let's say this was the original output. Anything that happens in ref of t is going to get reflected at the output after one period, right? So the first three edges are going to appear as it is after one period. Now the third edge, the sorry, fourth edge onwards is going to come as an advanced version, okay? So this is going to look like this. Out of T is simply a delayed version of reference of T. That's Okay, now if this has to happen, how should my total phase look like? So this is capital Phi, small out of T. So till 2T ref, there will be no change. It will be as before. Then there is this time, let me, to avoid confusion, let me start calling it as delta. Then after a time delta, you will suddenly see a step. 
and then it will continue as it is. Is this clear? You can stop me and ask questions if it is not clear. Why should these edges advance? Why it should not be delayed? Uh -huh, okay, so uh, you have a doubt in reference also why the edges are advanced? Reference part is fine, right? So VCDL, I mean, even if you did not think about anything else, I give a reference of T. VCDL signal is sim output is simply reference of T minus TF. So whatever is happening at the reference has to happen at the output after a delay of TF. So now if, so this happened at zero, that edge is happening at TF. This one? Huh. So why it is advancing in reference? Uh, okay. So uh, I think that is easier to understand if you think of it as sine of some omega t, let's say plus 45 degree. Uh, yeah, plus 45 degree. You compare this to a simple sine of omega t. So which one has a larger value? This has a larger value, right? So basically I would be comparing. So this signal is, let's say this is the, this is sine of omega t. This one is an advanced version of it. Okay, and then I defined our signal. Uh, so this was one of the reasons I defined it like this. So gamma of total phase, and you can get the square wave if I uh, do sine of phi ref of t, and if that value is greater than zero, it is one, otherwise zero. So if this is advancing, then this is also going to advance. So at any time, if you see phase has accumulated, phase has increased, it, it means the signal is advancing. If the phase is decreasing, it means the signal is uh, delayed. Okay, so that is why you have an advance here. Yeah. Huh. This point is your question. Huh. Okay, so before I look into this, is this clear? Right, so till this point, there is no change in the phase wave, it is as before. Now, after this point, suddenly all of the edges have uh, advanced. Now that is possible if there is a sudden phase accumulation. Okay. Now I can subtract this and sketch the small signal phase at the output. So phi out of T. So this is T ref, two T ref, and some delta after two T ref is when you will have the step. So if you were to look at these two waveforms side by side, right? Phi out of T is simply phi ref of T delayed by T ref. Small signal phi out of T is small signal phi ref of T delayed by T ref. Similarly, the total signal phi out of T is the total signal phi ref of T delayed by T ref. Now, if I were to write the equations, it will come out actually very quickly, but uh, the point is to also be able to visualize things. So now let's quickly sketch, uh, write out the equations. So we said that phi out of T is simply phi ref of T minus T ref. Okay, now this I'm going to split into total phase plus the small signal phase. This is equal to the total phase of the reference, which is delayed by TRF plus, sorry, the uh, DC operating point delayed by TRF and the small signal phase delayed by TRF. This is what we saw in the diagram also. So this is the large signal, which is basically our operating point, And this is the small signal riding on it. Okay. So now we can look at the 
Oh, before I move on, can you also calculate uh, total phi ref of t minus <laughs> total phi out of t? So you can again calculate it after the first edge is available at the output. Simply have to subtract this, this from this. Is it a continuous step? So after T ref plus delta, you should see a step. Okay. So after T ref plus some delta, you will have a step. And then after two T ref plus delta, it will come down. And this value is two prime. So I'm So if till T ref. Okay, we are starting from T ref. So till T ref plus two uh, T ref plus delta, the value is two pi. Now after that, you will see the step. And then after two T ref plus delta, the step has propagated to the output. So it will cancel out and become two pi. Okay. So what this is giving you is basically this is two pi plus the small signal uh, difference. So this is phi ref of t minus phi out of t. That is 2 pi plus the difference between these two. So now we look at the second path in the VCDL. So we are going to see how this VC is going to affect the output. Now, let me again take the example of a VCDL with current starved inverter. So if I plot TP, as a function of VC, I will have a very nonlinear curve like this, right? <laughs> now I'm going to represent this total VC, which is some VC of T as capital VC of T plus some small VC of T. Okay, now, because it can get confusing to differentiate between these two, I'm going to call this as VC naught, VC operating point. And we know that under steady state, VC naught is not going to vary with time. It's a stable value, right? So I'm going to remove the function of T from there. So now we are biased at some point, VC naught, which is giving us the delay T ref. Now I'm going to linearize the curve around this point, which means I can draw a straight line through this point, such that the slope of that slope of the straight line is same as the slope of this curve at this point. Okay, let's say this intersects here at some T naught, and the slope is represented in KDL. So I'm going to do KDL subscript S to show that this is represented in seconds per word. Now I can write this TP as some T naught plus KDL S into the total voltage VC. Okay. So this will be equal to T naught plus KDL S into VC naught plus KDL S into small signal PC. 
Now, this whole thing is what is giving us TRF plus KDL S into VC of T. Okay. So, if I say TP is now a function of time, this is equal to TRF plus KDL S into VC. So, I have written here it as VC of T. Correct. But here is the thing. If I make a change in VC here, we have defined our propagation delay as a time taken for an input edge to arrive at the output. So if I make a change in VC, I will see its effect at most after one reference period. It could be smaller than one reference period, but maximum it can take up to one reference period for this edge to come out. Okay? So instead of saying it as VC of T, I should ideally write it as VC of T minus TRF. I have made a small approximation. This number could be TRF or something smaller, but I'm saying that it is VC of T minus TRF. This is okay. Now, this is a linear model. Why? Because I have linearized the curve using a straight line. And this is valid for small values of VC or incremental values of VC. If I have a very large value in VC, you can totally get shifted to a different point on this curve, which means the value of KDL is different. If the value of KDL is different, the straight line you will have to draw through this is going to be something like this. Right? So you will have a new KDL and a new value of T0. So the model is also a function of the operating point. So we have basically linearized this curve around the operating point. And this is something that you have seen in regular analog circuits where you calculate a value of GM, RDS, et cetera, based on the bias point. Okay. So this is valid for small VC and the model, so the KDL value depends on operating point. This is clear? Okay, so now let's put both this information together to try and get a model for the VCDL. So now we said that <laughs> if I say my rep of t is some gamma into total phi ref of t and out of t, so this was equal to gamma into, so now if, if I put the total phase here, this is some omega ref into T plus the small signal phi ref of T. Where this omega ref into T is giving us our operating point reference. Right? Now out of T is reference T minus TP as a function of T. Okay. Which means this is gamma into phi ref where this is T minus TP as a function of T. This is okay. So now I can write, so this is my total phase at the output. Okay. So this is now equal to Now I'm going to expand this. So this will be equal to omega ref into T minus TP of T plus the small signal phase into T minus TP of T. So this is multiplication. This is uh, phi ref of function of some time. Okay. Now I can expand this. This is omega ref into T minus what is TP of T? This was T ref 
plus KDL in seconds per volt into Vc of T minus TRF. So omega ref T minus omega ref into TRF minus omega ref into KDL in seconds into Vc of T minus TRF. plus phi ref into T minus T ref minus KDL in seconds into VC of T minus T ref. So small simplification. What is this value? This is equal to two pi. So this is equal to omega ref t minus 2 pi minus the other factors. I'll just copy it. Now, does this remind you of something? So if I have some KDL in seconds, if I multiply this with 2 pi by T ref, what do I get? Voltage. Sorry? Why voltage? So it will become gradients per volt, right? So basically minus KDL in seconds into 2 pi pi TRF should give us KDL, but in radians per volt, right? So the minus sign, because as the delay is increasing, the phase is actually decreased. So this whole thing, I'm simply going to replace as plus KDL in KDL R to show that it is now in radians per volt, okay? So now at this stage, This is basically your large signal phi out. Okay. The rest of the quantities is a small signal. Okay. So if you look at this quantity, this is the small signal reference input phase small signal reference phase reference which is getting delayed by the total delay of the vcdl and that total delay of the vcdl also happen to have a reference delay plus a small delay additional to it okay so now i'm going to make a small simplification here let me so let me call this quantity right minus kdl seconds into vc into t minus t ref as some T1, which is a function of time, okay? Now this T1 of T, can you comment on its value compared to T ref? What do you expect it to be? Large, small, comparable? It should be small because otherwise, if it is becoming comparable to the period, it means that the uh, DLL within one or two steps is able to lock to the correct value. So if we say that DLL has a very long settling time, then this has to be a small value compared to the reference, right? Now let's see the effect of this T1 of T, right? <laughs> so let's say I had a small, so I'm going to call this portion 
as some phi one and the remaining portion as some phi two. I just wanted to show you how this is going to look like at the output. And let's say I had a small signal phase at the reference, which looked like some step input. And this is say happening at some T naught. Now, if I were to look at the small signal phase at the output, this phase now has two components. This has a phi one and a phi two, right? And this phi one is some KDLR into VC of T minus TRF. I'm going to roughly sketch it as, as, as some waveform. Okay. Now on top of this, I have phi ref of this quantity, right? So if this happened at T naught, here it has to happen at T naught plus T ref plus some T one, right? And at this position, I would have the signal. So the total phi out of T, which would be the summation of the two will look like this. Sorry, it will not be flat. So it will come like this. We'll have a step and then it will show this behavior. So this is a total phi out of T. Now, if I approximate and say that instead of happening at T naught plus T ref plus T one, it is happening at T naught plus T ref. The only change I'm making is that I'm assuming that the signal is happening at this location. So the rise is happening here and then it is following the curve. So in assuming that this signal has happened at T naught plus T ref, I make a very small error, right? But that makes our calculation much more easier. So I'm going to rewrite this, neglecting this factor. Okay, so let me copy this again. So I'm going to ignore this factor. So this is the total phi out of T. So now my small signal phi out of T is equal to KDL R into VC of T minus TRF plus phi ref into T minus TRF. Is this clear? We are now very close to the model. I can write this now in Laplace domain. This will be equal to KDL R into VC as a function of S into E power minus S TRF plus phi ref as a function of S into e power minus s t ref. So now I can take out s t ref e power minus s t ref outside. So this is simply k d l n r into v c of s plus phi ref of s into e power minus s t ref. So the model is so we have some phi ref of s and to this, we are adding. So we have some VC of S. This goes through again KDLR. And the output is phi out. Sorry, uh, we get this. And then we have this delay e power minus S TRF. And the output is phi out of S. Okay, so we have a small signal model for our VCDL. Simple, right? Okay, you can take a minute to see this and ask me if you have any questions. Okay, so next step is to make a model for PFD. plus charge pump, plus the loop filter.
So we have the PFD. This is a capacitor. So we'll have ref of T and out of T coming at these two nodes. The PFD is going to measure the phase error associated with them. Right? And at this node, you would have some VC naught plus VC of T. So now our aim is to relate the small signal phase in ref of T and out of T to finally VC of T. OK? So earlier you calculated what gives what is the result of phi ref of t total phase of the reference minus total phase of the output. What did you get? So we did this calculation at here. So we did phi ref of t minus phi out of t. The result was 2 pi plus phi ref of t minus phi out of t. Right? So I'll directly use the result. By the way, this is not complicated. So if I were to uh, solve with phi ref of t minus phi out of t. This is plus small signal phi ref of t minus small signal phi out of t. So the first subtraction will give us 2 pi corresponding to one delay of one TRF, right? This plus phi ref of, sorry, pause the recording. So this plus phi ref of T minus phi out of T. Now, if you remember the PFT after we have initialized it correctly and under steady state, after it has reached a steady state, the PFT is only going to detect this factor, the error between phi ref and phi out, right? It is not able to recognize this 2 pi or the 1 T ref delay, right? So basically, this is the phi error of T as seen by the PFT, okay? So now, PFT is going to see this phi error of T. And how can I relate the capacitor voltage to this phi error of T? So the PFT gain was phi error of T into what do you remember the gain of the PFT? We had calculated it as VDD by 2 pi. Right? But we got this VDD by 2 pi by subtracting the up and the down voltage waveforms. Now that subtraction is happening in current. So this VDD by 2 pi will now change to ICP by 2 pi. Okay, so this is now the average current flowing into the capacitor. Therefore, VC of T would be in 1 by C, integral of this from 0 to T dt. Okay, so I can take out all the constants. So this is ICP by 2 pi C, integral 0 to T phi error of t dt. Now it's only a matter of taking Laplace transform of this. So Vc of s is ICP by 2 pi c into phi error of s divided by s. Now I like to write it in the form of you know, each uh, component in the cascade uh, with respect to its gain. So this is basically ICP by 2 pi into 1 by SC into the phase error. Okay. 
Okay. So now the model is quite straightforward. So you have small signal phi ref of s. I have to subtract phi out of s from this. This will give me phi error of s. And this has to get multiplied by ICP by 2 pi. into 1 by SC. And this is the small signal we see of S. So we have the uh, small signal model for all the components. Can you build the model for the full delay lock loop? ICP is the charge from current. Did I not mark it? So we are now going to sketch the small signal. Phase domain model of the DLL. So we will have fire F of S. So I'm going to model the PFT charge from loop filter, uh, loop filter first. So this has to be phi out of S. This goes through ICP by 2 pi into 1 by SC. This gives us VC of T. Now, this gets multiplied with KDL in radians per volt. And this has to be added and then delayed by one clock period to get phi out of S. This is okay. Right. So now we are going to, so once we put the whole thing together, right? the VCDL model can be further simplified. So earlier we mentioned that our reference period is going to be much, much smaller than the overall loop settling time, right? That means the delay the signal C from this point to this point is going to be very insignificant, negligible compared to the overall delay of the loop. Therefore, I can neglect this. Okay, but this assumption can be done only after you have the full circuit together, right? Okay, so this is the small signal phase domain model of the delay lock loop. It's surprisingly very simple compared to all the calculations that we have gone through. Any questions on this? Okay, so anytime we see a loop, our favorite hobby is to break the loop somewhere, give a test voltage, see how much comes out at the other end, right? So we are going to calculate the loop gain. So let's say I, so to calculate the loop gain, first step is to make sure that there are no external inputs. So I make phi ref of S to be zero. Now I'm going to break the loop. So the loop is actually here in this path. Right, so I have to break it somewhere along the line. Let's say I break it here. So I give a phi test and I have to find out how much is coming out at this end, at phi out of S. Okay, so I will leave this as a homework. I think today's class has been heavy enough. We'll start with this point from the next class. So this is question 10.1, calculate the loop gain 
of DLL. So you are basically going to calculate F of S, sorry, phi out of S divided by phi test of S. And this will be equal to some negative of L of S, right? I also want to ask you another question so that we can discuss about it in the next class. Let's say you get some L of S. Then I can calculate its magnitude as mod of L of J omega, right? So far, okay. Figure out what this omega means. If it was a voltage signal and I had some V of S and I take mod of V of J omega, we know what that omega means, right? It is we are talking about the frequency content in that voltage signal. So now I have phi of S, phi test of S, and I can potentially calculate. For example, if this is phi F of S, I can calculate its magnitude as phi f of j omega. What does that omega mean? So this is the second question for you to think about. We can end the class here. Thanks.